This program on investing under regulation crowdfunding is not investment advice. Hello, everyone. I am so excited uh, today. Really, I, I, my my own socks are blown off by today's guest. We we have got a giant in the crowdfunding space with us today. Welcome to the Superpowers for Good Show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. We're here with Lagan, uh, Logan Fahey Franz, and he is the CEO of uh, Gray's Robotics. And this is such cool stuff, huge stuff, eco-friendly stuff. Ah! Stick around. You're going to love this show. Um, Logan, thank you so much for joining me. This, I mean, talking about robots is always fun and cool. But when we start thinking about the environmental implications that are positive, I just get giddy. Giddy, you can tell I'm a little bit giddy. Thank you for being here with us. Of course. Yeah, great to be here. Um, let's talk a little bit. I, I, I want to set the stage, you know, there are not a lot of companies in recent years that have raised more money under Regulation A from the crowd than you have. It's, I don't know, is it five? Is it, is it 10? Maybe it's 10, but it's not many, right? It, it's a short list. You've raised, I think you've raised over $20 million. Is that right? Yeah, through Gray's Robotics, we've raised almost 25 million. And then our sister company, Miso Robotics, has raised over 100 million. Wow. Wow. Um, now, most of you, the, how much of the 20 at Gray's Robotics now has come from the crowd versus Reg D offerings from accredited investors and things? About 15 million of it uh, has come directly from the crowd. That's great. Just love that. Just love that. <laughs> That is huge. Um, and so, you know, ordinary investors are having an opportunity to participate in this really cool business. Tell us about Gray's Robotics. I, I, there's so much I want to learn about the technology because it's pretty, pretty amazing as I looked at it. Tell us about it. Yeah. So Gray's was founded in 2017, um, commercial automation. We were founded in Wavemaker Labs, which is an incubation lab in, in Los Angeles. It was really focusing on early stage robotic companies in farming and agricultural, um, landscaping, and ultimately in, in food automation. Graze was a great idea that, that went to market uh, just over two years ago now, over 25 million invested in the product, We're really focused on three niches. So, <clears throat> excuse me, golf, uh, solar fields, um, and then uh, municipalities is a, is a huge market for us. And we do some uh, airport work as part of that sector. But the, the technology itself, fully autonomous, robotic lawnmower, 100 acres a week, um, all electric, really meant for, for large scale properties. Yeah, you know, this is this is cool stuff. And I, I'm excited to learn more. I, I when I was first reading about your product, I got the impression that it was for, you know, things like uh, utility rights of way and, you know, the the perimeter around the airport where you're really trying to knock down weeds to keep the, yep. the fire hazard down. And I could invent, envision robots handling that reasonably well, but golf courses, how the heck do you, do you do? Are you, are your robots managing the greens, the fairway lines, everything, or just the perimeter? Yeah, so we manage um, both the rough and fairway. So we don't do tee boxes uh, or the greens, but on a golf course, you know, typical golf course, about 100 acres, 70 acres or so is the rough. You've got 20 acres, that's the fairways, and then the rest is the tee box uh, and the fairways, or I'm sorry, the greens. So huge amount of the, the actual turf that's being managed is being managed through robotics. Our unit actually has the ability to adjust in height between fairways and rough. Uh, and then we have a special attachment uh, for certain fairways, which would be a real mower. Yeah, that, that really is pretty cool. Uh, do you golf? I do. 
Okay, good, good. Right, so get we have, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of appreciation yeah. for this. So, you know, I, one of the great things it seems to me is a robot could operate at night. Is that true? That's right. So uh, operating at night is is a unique element of what Graze does, uh, specifically in, in solar operation. So if you think about solar panels, they they uh, they turn during the day to follow the sun pattern. And so mowing at night is really the most efficient because the panels are set to flat. Uh, so that's when we, we first uh, developed the, the night mowing operation, including our self-deploy um, and self-charging uh, system. And that's now being applied to, to, to golf, which is a little bit more difficult because of the irrigation times, uh, but you still can get a decent amount of mowing done uh, throughout the night. Uh, it's great. Who are your biggest and best customers now? Yeah, so we work with mostly Fortune 500 companies. And um, so you think about um, large scale uh, solar and energy companies, uh, RWE, Duke Energy, um, you know, Florida Land and Power, those type of companies are, are most of our solar business on the airport side, DFW Airport, Cincinnati, Kentucky Airport. Um, and then on the golf side, you know, most of our work is, is on the, the larger scale uh, golf course ownership groups like the PGA or Invited or Arcus, uh, but we also work with individually owned golf courses. The uh, this is it's so fun. So, what are some of the other challenging uses that you've found that you can kind of do effectively? I, I think one of your big selling points is that it's just cheaper. You can do lawn maintenance cheaper than traditional providers. What are the what are some of the other challenging use cases where you're especially adept at solving problems? Yeah, so we're we're solving a number of different problems. Obviously, the labor shortage um, is kind of first and foremost to what a lot of our customers are experiencing. Uh, certainly, cost reductions are helpful, but I, I hear. Uh, more and more about uh, about being able to move employees that were doing mowing um, to other tasks on these facilities um, to more important uh, roles uh, at these facilities and not so much about elimination. Um, the other big component is the environmental uh, angle as as new uh, standards around electric um, uh, lawn care and landscaping have, have rolled out and there's many uh, bans uh, both from the state level and local municipality levels uh, for no noise control and for environmental reasons. Um, and so obviously being a, a fully electric solution uh, is important to us. Uh, but you think about the, the Gray's unit, the, the tractor holds all of the autonomy, um, and then we're able to push and pull a number of different attachments. So we're not just solving mowing. We have an attachment for collecting golf balls in the driving range. Uh, we have an upcoming uh, attachment that'll, that'll clean cart pass. We have uh, cameras that can do remote inspection on the unit. So the idea is, is that the autonomy stack that's built into the core application can do a number of tasks long-term based on the, the operator's individual use cases. Yeah, there are some easy to imagine applications of a robot that's wandering around anyway to you know, check the solar panels uh, for structural flaws, uh, for instance, all kinds of cool things that you could do. Um, now, one of the things I've, I've, I've been worrying about is I, I play golf uh, routinely on a little course where there are a lot of geese year round um, drive some golfers nuts. I kind of like that they're there. Uh, there are also a few peacocks that wander around our, our, our golf course. D how does your robot deal with interactions with critters like that? Yeah, it's a great question. So the system has um, 360 LIDAR and 360 vision on it. And so we can see uh, any uh, object um, that's out on the course. Um, if you think about kind of a geese, uh, the unit would, would see it, it would stop, uh, it would wait about 10 seconds. If the, the geese hasn't moved, it's going to back up, go around it. Um, and then we'll notate that in the path planning that there was an object there. Um, and so we, we avoid all of uh, those uh, living or uh, non-living objects um, on a course or really anywhere. And safety uh, is something that's regulated um, by the Outdoor Power Equipment Institute and, you know, our airport work, it's regulated by the FAA. So a lot of work has went into uh, the, the safety stack on the system. It's cool. You know, in some ways, it's easy to imagine that on average, 
the, the robots could do a better job than humans at spotting hazards. They, you know, they, they never forget to pay attention. Uh, and, that's that's yeah. yeah, they may use their LIDAR more effectively than uh, a tired lawn mowing guy. Uh, you know, I've been the tired lawn mowing guy in the past. <laughs> And run over the sprinkler head. So, yeah, it's it's cool to think about the um, the potential for this. This. How big is the market? It, it, have you satisfied all the need? Are you selling all that you can sell? Doing all you can do, or is there growth ahead of you? Yeah, I mean, we've we've really just um, started to to get to market in a meaningful way. So the the company, as I mentioned. Uh, spent a lot of time on the R&D of the product, uh, frankly, probably over uh, overbuilt the product. Um, my team came in about a year and a half ago now um, as the new leadership team at Gray's, and we've really focused on these three markets. The markets as a whole are huge. You think about golf, uh, 3 million acres of mobile grass, airports, 2 million acres, solar fields, uh, going on 3 million acres, but doubling year over year. Uh, the use case is just uh, you know, massive. The, the the challenge is always that in robotics, you have to deploy uh, in, a, in a conservative way uh, so as to, to learn the, the environments that the, the robots are living in. And if you deploy too fast, like so many companies have done, um, you have this high return rate and, and ultimately the, the adoption of the technology lessens. And so, you know, if you think about Gray's trajectory, we're, we're releasing 150 units. Um, in the first two quarters of 2025, those are primarily going to solar and golf. Um, the following production run, which will be about a year later, um, is a little bit larger, about 500. And then as you get into the third production run is when we're talking closer to 2,000 units. And so we still have a lot of scale to, to get to. But in modeling, I think you could you could easily deploy tens of thousands of units across a uh, five plus year period. It is exciting to think about uh, your your potential here, and and you know you're already you know well into the maturation stage and just at that scale and ramp. It, it's an exciting moment in time for I think for really investors is. to participate, jump in. As you think about uh, this, I, I'm taken by you know this is just sexy and cool. I, you know, I, I'm one that, you know, loves the autonomous vehicles. I've been for a ride in them a few times and just love it. But you are a rock star independent of that. Uh, you, you have had a, a really stellar career. Tell us a little bit about your career and how you got to this point, because you're a player. <laughs> well, appreciate that. The, you know, I, I started my career actually in, in nonprofits and uh, found this kind of social enterprise sector uh, of building businesses that have uh, social uh, purposes and do social good. Really interesting. And so uh, really uh, my first major uh, kind of role was director of social enterprise for a, a large uh, workforce development agency in Cleveland. We actually built a, a chain of uh, retail bakeries that hired ex-offenders. Um, I then uh, built another landscaping company that uh, also hired, um, in this case, youth ex-offenders and really found a passion in building those type of businesses, but realized I wanted to be uh, an owner operator and not just working for uh, the nonprofits. And so a lot of the board members who sat on the boards of those two nonprofits uh, backed me to create uh, Fay Group, uh, which is really our holdings company. And we set out to uh, by uh, companies, good companies that we felt we could scale, uh, infuse some level of automation into, uh, but also do better. So, you know, be environmentally sustainable. You know, we, we love the B Corp uh, model, more transparency. Uh, we love an open hiring model. And we've deployed that in, in the three ventures since then. The first one was a chain of lawn and garden stores that we uh, revamped and, and ultimately sold to private equity. The second was Robin Autopilot, which is uh, software and a marketplace that uh, we we ran for the last five years. Um, and then, of course, uh, Accra's Robotics Now. So it's been a fun uh, a fun journey, and, and I still get a, a chance to infuse a lot of what uh, I worked on early in my career into the businesses that we now own and operate. This really is cool stuff that you're doing, uh, Logan. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be able to share your story. You're, like I say, you're a rock star. You're a player, and I appreciate your passion for social enterprise as a key part of 
what you do. Uh, listen, everyone, I, I'm here with Logan uh, Franz. He's the, the CEO of Gray's Robotics. And, you know, he he's a rock star entrepreneur, uh, raising capital from the crowd now. But we've had such a great discussion talking about robots that mow lawns. We're going to pause now, take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll talk to him about his superpower. Stick around. You don't want to miss this. You can get in on the ground floor to help fix the climate crisis for as little as $100. Pause now to scan the QR code to get started or visit s4g.biz slash raise green. You can be a green at raise green. Want to learn from the world's great change makers? Find your superpower. Subscribe to the Superpowers for Good newsletter at superpowersforgood.com. Make your strengths into superpowers that will change the world. Join the super crowd today. Superpowers number four, good.com. Hope to raise money from the impact crowd. Good investors are as interested in community, social or environmental impact as you. Connect with Funding Hope, an SEC-registered FINRA member crowdfunding portal to learn how to raise capital from the impact crowd. Scan the QR code now. Welcome back, everyone. I, I'm so fortunate today. We've got Logan uh, Logan Franz is here with us, rock star entrepreneur. We've been talking about Gray's Robotics, his uh, <clears throat> robotic lawn mowing company. We're going to shift gears, talk about his superpower now. So stick around. You don't want to miss this. Logan, um, I'm just so impressed with your career. You know, there are so few people, and I realize that there are others, but there are very few people. And, and you know, you, you you grab 100 people at random. You know, there, there may not be anyone in that group that has been more successful than you are. Uh, that's pretty remarkable. You, you've built companies, you've done great stuff in the social enterprise space, great stuff in nonprofits. I've kind of done it all. <laughs> what is your superpower? Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I, I think along the way you make a lot of mistakes and you get better and better. And so uh, you're talking to me today and it, um, you know, everything always looks good. It's a, it's a long process to get there. And I think one of, one of the, uh, superpowers I like to think I have is is the ability to just keep getting back up. Um, you know, I spent uh, you know my, my early career um, building businesses that you know didn't quite work out. I started a landscaping company when I was sixteen, and it was tough. And uh, you you go through so many um, failures and so many iterations, and um, even with the social enterprise work, um, it's it's never as easy as anyone has, has ever said. And you know, I've had the the fortunate ability to to just keep getting uh, back up. I grew up in a, a small town in Cleveland. Um, you know, was raised by uh, a, a painter. My mother was a, a mechanical engineer, and then became a bartender. Um, you know, humble beginnings, and really, it was was taught early on that it's 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 not my brains that are going to get me there. It's the work ethic, and so I had the ability uh, to really just keep putting in, keep putting in. And as we got uh, you know further down the line, I learned a lot about business, a lot of trial and error, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to to be here uh, today to to really lead some of these really cool companies that um, are going to market in big ways. And I think the the experience of of having gone through building those companies and and the the, the ups and downs of trials allows me to come in. Most of the companies, if not all of them that I've run, I've come in and really taken over the company at a critical point. To get it to scale, to get it optimized, uh, to to raise the right amount of capital, and so I'm able to come in and, and really fill a gap um, uh, where it's needed. It, it is a vital skill, and I see how it grows out of, in part, this this ability to get back up, uh, mm -hmm. as as you say, because no one ever succeeded without stumbling. Uh, you right. know, and I look at Elon Musk, one of the richest people on the planet. And it's certainly true for him. Uh, he may not be as likely to admit it, but others as well. You know, I, I, I kind of uh, have a connection with, with Bill Gates, admire him. He certainly stumbled uh, in many ways, right? We can see the stump getting back up. So essential. 
Uh, can you think of one specific example that you could share when you got back up after a really big challenge? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, I, I think um, the, the most relatable one, and there's certainly in every business, there's the, you know, the time when you couldn't make payroll, the time when a, a deal fell through, the partnership that ended. And so there's lots of those stories. Um, but I think the, the most, in, you know, impactful on my career was when when I uh, left the social enterprise work, I had a brief stint of uh, thinking I wanted to go run for office. And uh, I ran for for city council in, in Cleveland, uh, where I'm from, uh, kind of in the core downtown district, and uh, lost miserably, right? And this was, you know, it was, it was very public to uh, leave the social enterprise. The, the bakeries were all downtown. I, I was somewhat known. I think I lost by something like 80%. And um, it, it would be very easy to... Uh, you know, just feel beat up and beat down. But um, I was able to come out of that uh, slump and um, get right back to it. And I, I built Fay Group and uh, was able to rally the investors, a lot of which were donors in, in my uh, political campaign. And uh, I think, you, you know, so much of uh, what I've applied to business, I can put into that short amount of time. I also think if you can get out there and, and knock on doors and talk to anyone, uh, that is an unbelievable uh, lesson for for how to apply that to to business and uh, getting okay with with rejection and, and failure absolutely yeah that's a great story I love that story uh, I can relate to that I'll spare you the details of my story <laughs> but I can relate to that experience of running for office uh, what are some tips we all face these challenges in life not just as entrepreneurs how do we overcome challenges and get back up when we fall? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and it's it's so different from everybody. And I, I've learned um, over the last ten years that the blanket device of of just keep getting back up and 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 fighting it is not for everyone. Not everyone's an entrepreneur. Not everyone's meant to take those risks. Um, in 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 my case, it was really about I knew internally that it was something I wanted to accomplish and go at, and I took a lot of risks uh, as part of it. Um, but I think everyone needs to hear that failure is just part of the the process. And if you haven't failed, it's probably, um, it, you know, not a, not a great uh, position to be in going into some of these companies and, and building something because you learn so much in that in that process. And so I think that's really important. I also think relying on uh, external advisors is really important. I've, I've leaned on a couple lifelong mentors, many of I met early on who have been with me throughout the process seasoned business folks, seasoned entrepreneurs, seasoned board members, uh, who I can bounce things off of and say, am I not seeing this? Because the number one thing we do as entrepreneurs is we don't quit things uh, soon enough when, we, when it's a bad idea or it's not working and pivot to the next thing. We stay in it too long. And I think uh, external advisors are kind of critical to helping uh, you see that and, and, and really uh, not spending too much time at something that's not working. Boy, that, that's great advice. I really appreciate that. As one who stumbles, I'm good at that. <laughs> I'm grateful for some advice on how to get back up more effectively. Uh, before we wrap up, and we are getting toward the end here, uh, I wonder if you'd take a minute or two and tell people how they can learn more about Gray's Robotics, including how they can learn more about investing. Uh, how can they connect with you? I, you know, people are going to want to follow you uh, on social media. And People may want to call you and talk to you directly. And, and obviously, you don't have infinite amounts of time. Tell people what's an appropriate way to connect uh, so that people understand. Yeah, so Gray's Robotics, um, you know, we're a very um, vocal company and, and, and we're, we're out at events and active on social media. And so, uh, you know, graysrobotics.com and, and all of our handles are, are Gray's Robotics or Gray's Mowing, pretty easy. Um, to find on on social, you know, we 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 keep folks uh, updated in a number of ways. Newsletters. We do a, a monthly webinar, uh, which is a really great way to to come and and explore what the company's done in the last month. Um, hear updates from our team and and also hear updates on on the investments. Of course, invest.gray's Robotics is where uh, all the information is on our our current offering. Uh, we have a commitment to being diversified from a capital perspective, so we'll always allow. 
existing and new investors to participate even alongside our strategics and VCs uh, and at uh, the same valuations that uh, we're, we're raising at. So uh, absolutely keep up. And I'm active on LinkedIn. Would love to connect with anyone uh, who uh, is interested in talking about social enterprises or uh, robotics, uh, tech, uh, any topic, uh, always happy to. All righty. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, and I want to see you succeed. I want to see you succeed with your capital raise and with th this process of, you know, frankly, you know, helping find a way to do some of the work that really no one enjoys doing and allowing the people who've been mowing lawns to become lawnmower managers <laughs> instead of <laughs> lawnmowers. Uh, right. So, uh, want to see you succeed. Thank you very much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. All righty. Now let's do some good.